All right, guys, welcome back once again. I'm here in the University of Vienna, joined here by Hari. Um, Hari did uh, Erasmus Mundus Scholarship Master's program. Yes, yes. Uh, which year was that? Uh, so I did my master's from 2014 to intake to 2016 when I graduated. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk into more details. So the whole point of this video is to walk you guys through his journey of how he got this scholarship, which is already so tough and competitive. Um, See, after you get, this is the reaction everybody has. Like, oh man, I don't know how I got that. But anyway, stick to the last uh, to know about how he got his scholarship. Let's start. What I want from you is uh, just give me like a 45 second to one minute introduction quickly mm -hmm. so that people know who this guy is standing next mm -hmm. to. So yeah, as you already mentioned, my name is Hari. I'm from Chennai in India. I did my bachelor's, mm -hmm. bachelor studies in uh, India in SRM University in uh, material science with special focus on nanotechnology. Okay. And um, I wasn't a very bright student, but I did perform averagely well. So I scored a 8.2 CGPA out of 10. Averagely well. Now we know. Okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't work after my undergraduate. I directly started my master's. So I had a course on tribology in uh, my uh, bachelor's. So tribology is the science of friction and lubrication. So mm -hmm. rubbing of any two surfaces is tribology. Mm -hmm. I knew what the science was. Then I got to know by word of mouth from my senior in uh, undergraduate about these Erasmus Mundus courses and the scholarships provided. And fortunately they had Erasmus Mundus uh, tribology. So right. it was called Erasmus Mundus tribos. Uh -huh. So I applied for this in 2014 while I was completing my bachelor's. bachelor's. Right. So the process starts like a semester before you graduate your uh, bachelor's. Right, right. Um, and I don't know how is the process now, but back then, uh, so in 2014, they, the scholarships were divided into uh, two tiers. Okay. So category A, category B. In mm -hmm. category A, you get fully funded. Mm -hmm. So that includes living, um, traveling, yeah. tuition, everything's covered. Category B is partial. So right one or two of the things are not mm -hmm. covered. So in 2014, I applied for Erasmus Mundus Tribos as a Category A scholarship applicant. Wow. Um, you have to take the risk. So they give you the ch um, choice of Category A or Category B. Okay. So you have to like strategize while applying for these courses. And yeah. you, you can apply for only maximum of three courses in Erasmus Mundus back then. I don't know about... At a time? Yes. Okay. So I don't know how the rule is now but a student can, could apply only for three maximum courses. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you need to strategize which courses you selected for full scholarship or and partial or self-funded. Of yeah. course, they accept self-funded students too. Imagine that someone who is studying bachelor's right now, mm -hmm. okay, what advice would you like to pass it on? Let's start with like documents. Erasmus Mundus application procedure is pretty simple. It's always free. You could apply it without being worried about paying your fees. And moving on to the documents, there are like six to seven documents that you need. Mm -hmm. Uh, the basic stuff like scan of your passport front and back okay. and a police clearance certificate from the local police station saying, okay. stating that you don't have any criminal cases against you right. and then moving on to the educational documents you need uh, English language level certificate so it can be IELTS or, or TOEFL, TOEFL. Okay. and IELTS is most common more Maybe common 6.5 to 6 yes bands? anything above 6.5 they will consider you as an applicant cool yeah and then uh, you need uh, transcripts from your uh, undergraduate until my seventh semester yes as far as possible yeah transcripts with a total list of the courses on the transcript yeah. should be present and then you need a provisional certificate from your uh, uh, undergraduate uh, university stating that this person has completed or is going so to complete so, yeah. yes his uh, undergraduate and then you need a transfer certificate which you always get in Indian universities from the faculty that you studied under you need a letter of recommendations from two individuals and you give two yes okay. two different letters two different individuals and yeah. it's your choice and apart from all this from your side these Erasmus Mundus courses they want to see a letter of motivation yeah. so why are you applying for this course that's pretty much it is there a requirement whatever documents you said I have all of them imagine that um, do I need to go through some notarization attestation and all that yes you need to notarize all the documents from a notary public uh -huh. 
and which frankly is not hard to do in India. You find a good notary public. Yeah, yeah. And you get it arrested. So Hari, I have all these documents, I've notarized them. What do I do next? In fact, what I want to know rather is, what was your process like? Yeah, so for, for my course, there was an online portal for submitting the application. Okay. So you gather all the documents, all the notarized documents. Right. Take a good scan of each color scan and you upload it into the application portal with any other details they may require. And this application portal will be in the Erasmus Mundus Master Programs website. Okay. Along with uh, other information like deadline of submission and closing of the application. So once you submit, you may receive confirmation mail mm -hmm. from the program. It's usually a person mailing you, the course coordinator, that they have received your application. Oh, wow. Okay. Depends on each course. But for my course, the waiting time was from uh, February till uh, June. Yeah. Once you have submitted in your documents, you go, go on about your undergraduate, finishing your last semester, your thesis. Yeah, yeah. And then they come back in June. Either they come back with preliminary results okay. or uh, final results. Uh -huh. So in my case, it was final results. So they tell you, okay, you have the scholarship or you don't have the scholarship or you are welcome as a self-funded student. I just need to ask a question what you just mentioned. You said they will get back to you with the results, mm -hmm. right? Now results could be, yes, you've got selected or yes, you've not got selected. Mm -hmm. And if you've got selected, is then two things comes up. You're getting paid as a scholarship, scholarship yeah. or you're self-funding your own studies. Mm -hmm. This is where it gets separate, am I right? Yes. Okay, so in your case, they told like, hey, you've got the results, we have selected you. Also, we have got you the scholarship. Yes, that's right. So as soon as you apply the application via Erasmus Mundus platform, mm -hmm. It's the same platform for scholarship also and for getting admission also. Yes, so okay. on each uh, program's application portal, yeah. at least in my program's application portal, you submit in your documents and then you tick a box saying I'm submitting also for the scholarship. Yes, this we didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was, this is why I was, I was just so confused. Like the same guys are telling you your actual results mm -hmm. and same guys are telling you whether you got the scholarship or not. Mm -hmm. That's why. Yeah. Keep that in mind to tick that box. Yeah, yeah of course. And yeah. also, as I said, because there are different uh, levels of scholarship, you could select the partial or the fully funded or, as I said, the full scholarship. Just in a short, want to know uh, what kind of journey you've gone through. You've come, he's doing his PhD right now. Uh, again, another scholarship from where? It's uh, you know, it's Luleå University of Technology in Sweden. No, it's like <laughs> this dude is roaming around in all over Europe now. Uh, so, which all countries during your masters you went through? Uh, during my masters, the first semester was in uh, UK, second in Slovenia, and uh, third I had the choice between Portugal or uh, Lul uh, or Sweden, uh -huh. and I chose for Sweden. Okay, so since then you're still there. Yes, since then, I, then I stayed there for <laughs> PhD. Yeah. Okay, man. Yeah. Nice, nice. And and you completed your uh, masters in 2016. That's right. Yeah. And for last two years, he's doing his PhD now. Exactly. Hari, one last question to you before we say goodbye. Can you walk us through what kind of when you say fully funded scholarship from Erasmus Mundus, what you got? Mm -hmm. How much money do you get for what? If you can share that. So my scholarship as you mentioned fully funded was to an amount amount of 48000 euros over 2 years and out of this 48000 euros you get 1000 euros per month okay as uh, living costs okay wherever you are in your uh, 2 years of uh -huh. master program and then you get 4000 per year so 8000 over the 2 years yes for traveling fees and this is what you get in your bank account the rest of the 48000 is already paid as tuition to whatever whichever university you are in. Ah, during the course of studies, there is no event where you're like lacking of money, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> so you don't have financial burden, nor you go and work part time. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, but that's the that's the point of these scholarships. They don't want to, you to stress and study. They want you to be relaxed and then study. And then focus fully on studies exactly. and create more results. Exactly. Yeah. And also, also because the focus is on mobility. Many people would not know what is mobility when okay. we're talking mm. about. So just a one or two line. So as, as I was saying that my program was in different universities. So you have to move between these universities each yeah, semester. Yeah, yeah, right. So this is called mobility and the goal of Erasmus Mundus and Erasmus programs in general in Europe is to increase the mobility of the students across Europe and mm -hmm. also other parts of the world mm -hmm. so that they gain more 
uh, a varied knowledge and experience. Right, right. Exactly. If you would not yeah. be doing PhD, then I, for example, because I, I I finished in Sweden, yeah, they have the six month uh, visa extension for job search for all students, international, Any student, yes, yeah, yeah okay. all international students. So I would have taken a six month uh, extension, right, and because the scholarship was is so well, yeah, I I would have sustained the stay for the six months myself right. without okay. being burdened on anyone or right. also n not stressing about it Absolutely. and that would have given me the chance to look not only in Sweden but all over Europe for jobs because right right so yeah. sitting in Sweden with that six months visa you could have applied in Germany Poland exactly. France anywhere yes right right so with that yes there is a bit of risk what if you don't get it that six months yeah then you know what I mean? Yeah, I've, if you don't get in the six months, of course, you're always welcome back in Europe. So you could go back to your home country, look for a job there and then still apply for jobs in Europe because right. now you have the European qualification right. and people won't hesitate to look at your CV or call you for a Skype interview. So. Yeah, yeah. Just another twist. Okay. What if you would have ended your studies in UK where there is no stay back option? <laughs> There is no stay back option in UK. Exactly, and Brexit too now. Yeah, so, yeah. I, mean. I don't know. I mean, but UK does have, in my case at least, UK does have a huge Asian population. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, and, and they're also pretty industrialized. So, it wouldn't have been hard to mm -hmm. find a job there. Okay. It would have been an effort, but ultimately something would have worked out. Right. If not, as I said, you always go back to your home country and then look for jobs in Europe. Well, anyways, you have nothing to lose. Exactly. Everything was yeah. paid off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, uh, would you say there's a bit of luck also and stuff? Yes, there is, there is yeah? a bit of luck. You need to be at the ra right place, right time. Right time, yeah? All and that matters. The right eyes need to see your application, so yeah. All right, guys, uh, on this note, uh, I would like to say goodbye. Thank you, Hari, for coming on my channel. No problem. And uh, that was an interesting talk we had. <laughs> and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.